Could your smartphone be causing you or your children to grow horns? Are we growing horns or are millennials? This is what a new study is suggesting. The change in our skull bone structure. Are we growing horns because of cell phones? I don't know, are we? I'm Becky Wandell here with some tips about what to do when you come across science reporting like this in the news. Let me go get PBS NewsHour science reporter Seekon Akpan to help me out. So cell phones give you horns? Well, that's what this news story was claiming, but as a scientist turned journalist, I was pretty skeptical right away. Why? Well, the claims seem beyond too good to be true, and catchy viral headlines about popular issues like cell phones always give me pause. Yeah, I've actually noticed that the media loves to report on any study that talks about really popular things like coffee, chocolate, pets, wine, things that basically anyone is likely to click on. Yeah, exactly, and that's what caught my eye about this article. I was eager to see if the researchers really had the data to back up what they were claiming. And what did you find? More like what I didn't find. So first of all, the study didn't look at cell phone use, like not even a little bit. Mm -hmm. And also they were studying bone spurs and not horns. So comparing a horn to a bone spur is like comparing your elbow to a fingernail. It's really not the same thing. Despite all of the headlines, the study didn't prove anything about how cell phone use affects our bodies. Did you find anything else that was wrong? Well, they say that their results may apply to all millennials or all young people, but they didn't really look at everyone. So you can't actually do that with scientific studies? You can't generalize? Well, you can, but not with this one. So ideally, subjects in the study are both representative and random. So say a scientist wants to study a classroom of 30 students, 15 boys, 15 girls. Well, that might take too much time, so a scientist might say, oh, I'll study a slice of the classroom. Well, in order for it to be representative, it needs to be three boys, three girls. The scientist also wants to pick those students at random because when you downsize, you want to make sure that you're not introducing any bias to the group. The Millennial Horn Study didn't do that. They used patients who had already been to the chiropractor and had complained about problems with their necks. That's very different than a group of normal millennials or young people going about their business. But despite that, the article still concludes by asking what the future could possibly hold for these young people when they're developing this horrid condition so early in their lives. That's right. I mean, it's completely ridiculous. So to figure out this stuff about the population sample, you actually had to go look at the study yourself, right? Yeah, it's always important to look for what I call the source data, you know, the original data behind the study. Do you have any tips about how to get to that source data, how to get answers from a scientific study if you're not really used to digging through a long research paper? Yeah, you should just do what I do, which is try to find an expert who can explain it to you. So, you know, maybe if it's a health study, you talk to your doctor or see if your doctor knows anyone who can sort of talk about what's going on in that study. So is there anything else that smart media consumers should know when they're looking at a scientific study? Yeah, always look to see who conducted the study to see if there are any conflicts of interest. Like in this case, one scientist who co-authored the study also sells posture pillows, so he has an investment in getting people to worry about their necks. And what about looking into where it was published? Well, yeah, you want to make sure that a study is in a peer-reviewed journal. Peer review essentially means that they had other scientists look at the data in the study and approve it before it could get published. So it sounds like you're telling people that they should be skeptical when they see a catchy viral headline, especially one that seems like it could be claiming more than it could actually prove. Right, always dig a little deeper on your own. Always read more than one trustworthy news outlet because even the best ones can get things wrong sometimes. Well, thank you so much, Seekon. Yeah, of course, thank you.